A little disclaimer here right off the bat. This won't be the typical awesome players off-road motorcycle club video. And I know some of you uh, watch these videos with your kids and your spouses. Uh, you may want to watch this one on your own first. <laughs> I'll start with the usual stuff. It was a, a cold and rainy day in October, and on this particular day, it was just Chris and I. And it was raining pretty heavily when we left Montreal, so I don't have any footage of the ride to this sand pit. And, uh, and then to make matters worse, I missed Chris's first fall of the day. You okay? Let's see that again. I can't do that again. What? The what? What happened? Lack of traction, soft sand. Yeah, but it, you didn't have enough speed. Were you in second? Oh, no. You gotta be in second. No, there was no way. It's too soft up there. I felt really soft coming down here. I'll try it again, but I think that one, I mean, it's fucking steep. Give her! This time, Chris decided to uh, give it a little more juice in second gear, and even with the K60s, he was able to make it up. Then it was my turn, and the 800 just clawed its way up the last few feet. After a little more fun in the sand pit, we hit the trail, and uh, that's where this strange day really began for me. Recently, I'd been on a contract out of town and I'd bumped into a guy that I'd worked with many times over the years. And he asked me if I'd heard the news. And uh, when I, I, what news? And the news was that someone we had traveled quite a bit with and who I'd known for many years had had a serious motorcycle accident and was paralyzed from the waist down. I'm not going to go into the specifics of his accident. It's not really my story to tell. But um, it, it really shook me up. I mean, we're talking about the sporty guy, the, the, the super athletic, good-looking guy. The guy that uh, maybe you didn't see him that, that often, but when you did, you were always very glad to, uh, glad to see him. And um, if this could happen to him, well, it sure as hell could happen to me. Now, I, I must admit, you know, my, my, my first reaction after the kind of, you know, this is horrible, um, was, was kind of feeling guilty. You know, he had ridden motorcycles when he was much younger and had uh, given it up when he uh, had his children and started his own business. And every time I saw him, that's what we talked about. We talked about motorcycles. And I would always kind of chide him, you know, come on, man, when are you going to get back in the saddle? When are you going to get a bike? And this went on for years and years. I'd pop into his office to drop something off or pick something up. Sometimes I'd come by bike and he'd come out and we'd talk bikes. If you walked into his office, his screensaver was usually whatever the latest Ducati or, you know, high-end BMW sport bike was. I think the last one I remember was the S1000RR sitting there on his computer screen. So I'm out here on this ride now, and it was actually a really good ride. We, we just seemed to just link up from one nice trail to another trail all morning. It was pretty much effortless. But in the back of my mind was just this kind of nagging, this kind of nagging doubt. 
about whether or not I should even be doing this. I mean, our little group here is no stranger to motorcycle accidents. Uh, Joe, many, many, many years ago, who's one of the founders of our little club, had shot off a corner at pretty good speed into a cornfield and knocked himself out for quite a few minutes, dislocated a shoulder. Um, I, I remember, you know, racing him to the hospital on the back of my old Honda 550 Super Sport. Henrik was almost run down by a car running a stop sign when he lived in the city and uh, had a pretty good crash on his CB, uh, CBR 1100 XX Blackbird. Even Chris, when he first started riding, uh, went on a went went to a BMW rally down in the states and uh, shot his 1150 GS off into the woods and did a lot of damage to the bike and ended up breaking his collarbone and and I had a work friend, uh, someone I shared an office with, who was nearly hit by a car turning left in front of him and when he swerved to avoid it, he hit a lamp post with his back and snapped off a bunch of his ribs right near the spine and punctured a lung. I was on a motorcycle trip in Northern Ontario with one of my oldest friends and he got a little too aggressive on the front brake in the rain and tucked the front end and slid. Yeah, he was wearing a nylon rain suit and we were going close to 100 kilometers an hour and I remember watching him slide. It must have been over 100 meters. We picked up the bike and we rode home 600 kilometers that day. But in all the time I've been riding, and I've been riding since 1988, so 25 years, I've never had that big crash. And because the crashes that were happening in the circle of people around me uh, yes, they were serious crashes in a way, but no one actually was left with any lasting physical damage. And after this news, I, you know, one of the things I also felt was I, I felt a, a little bit more respect for the guys I ride with because I realized all of them had had a pretty serious accident. And, and none of the people I ride with are, are, are stupid or lack introspection. So I realized all of them must have had to confront some fear after those events, and they all decided to keep riding. And I, I, knowing, knowing what I know now, I know that that took some courage. But for myself, after hundreds of thousands of kilometers, and I guess to a large part, you know, 25 years, God knows how much mileage never having that moment, never having really to confront it, and always kind of shrugging it off as, that won't happen to me, um, I'm not a 17-year-old kid on a crotch rocket. When I do have a close call, I tend to, I tend to think about it and analyze it and, and try to figure out what I would do differently next time. Here I have a little tip, nothing serious. Oddly enough, perhaps to some, I don't consider myself a big risk taker. I have three small children. Um, I have responsibilities. So it, at least in my own mind, I don't consider myself a crazy risk taker. And I don't consider the guys I ride with to be big risk takers either. You know, we do fall down quite a bit, but we're not crashing in the true sense of you know, high speed, big impacts. Most of the stuff we see is failing to climb that little sandy hill and then you lose your footing and the bike tips over or tucking the front end in the sand at 20 kilometers an hour. Yes, you could land in an awkward way and break your arm or break your leg or something a little more serious, but we don't rip down some of these trails at a hundred kilometers an hour like I've seen some guys do because I don't know what's around that corner and I've come around that corner before and seen those two ATVs park side by side talking or that pickup truck coming the other way so 
we see ourselves almost as being relatively cautious motorcycles. And I know that maybe that sounds funny to people who watch the videos, but I think when, when we're together, that's how we see ourselves. Now, I guess we all have to look at our situation and decide if we're comfortable with the risks associated with motorcycle. And I guess a real, you know, a hard part of that is what are the risks? I mean, you know, where does it fall on the risk scale? Because everybody rides different terrain, different situations at different speeds. Everyone has different skills. I mean, you're making a lot of decisions when you ride a motorcycle. And just like in every other facet of your life, some people are better at making decisions than others. I mean, I know the risks of a very serious injury in motorcycling are relatively low. But when the consequences are so potentially devastating, you know, even a low risk is a significant risk in a way. I mean, I, I don't know if you've been in the same situation that I have, but many times over the years you meet someone and they want to get into motorcycling and they're pumping you for information and you, of course, are very excited about motorcycling and you're, you're telling them about how much fun and excitement they're going to have. But in the back of your mind, at least in mine, there's always been that thought, what happens if that person buys a motorcycle and gets killed or gets injured how much responsibility do I bear in that situation and yes everyone's an adult and everyone is capable of making their own decisions but when someone comes to you to talk to you about motorcycling do you gloss over the risks or do you just focus on the positives because they're coming to you because you are the experienced person in that domain. So I always felt I did have some responsibility to say, but you do know that if you ride a motorcycle, you will crash. And I've always told people who are starting out, it's not a matter of if you're going to crash. If you ride long enough, uh, at some point you will be on your ass in the ditch and in my case at least as far as riding on the road um, you know I've made it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kilometers without that happening over the last 25 years but I know that day is coming we joke dress for the slide not for the ride but uh, we do dress for the slide we certainly didn't when we were younger. And we were all very lucky. To me, that's the scariest part about motorcycling, is that even with the best equipment and the best preparation, luck still plays this incredibly large factor. Things can happen out there that you just don't have any control over. And that's not a very good feeling when your life is kind of hanging in the balance. When this happened, it was almost the end of the season. This was actually the last ride I videotaped. After this, I really didn't feel like uh, videotaping any of our rides. And I was happy it was near the end of the season because I knew I would have quite a bit of time to think about it and to decide what I was going to do. In the end, um, I decided to keep riding. Part of that was a rational process about how I wanted to live my life and, and what levels of risk I was comfortable with. And I must admit, a big part of it was just that as time passed over the winter, the horror of what had happened just kind of faded a bit. I did decide I was going to 
improve the equipment I was riding with. I was riding with quite a bit of protective gear, but since then I've upgraded my my body armor, spine protector. I'm I'm riding more often now with a neck brace on, a Liat neck protector. And I'm also erring a little more on the side of being cautious. The idea of something really bad happening is not as far away as it used to be. I mean, I and I and I care about the people I ride with, and I don't want them to get hurt. So I now know, you know, we all have that responsibility to each other too to maybe speak up if we see someone doing something a little too risky. If my memory serves, uh, at this point we were we were actually getting pretty cold and miserable, and we stopped in this little rest stop to get a coffee to warm up. So I'll close this video by saying, uh, be safe. And uh, I guess that's the end of another season for the Awesome Players Off-Road Motorcycle Club.